okay. It's August 10th, August 10th, uh, 2008. And uh, I had just, I had a Chevrolet Caprice, AKA box Chevy, with some rims, 26 inch rims on them. It was a uh, purple slash blue. Throughout the day, it was supposed to have been a, a, a softball tournament going on in Forsyth, Georgia at one of the parks. And uh, so I called one of my homeboys up and I was like, we riding today? You know what I'm saying, whatever. He's like, yeah, we can ride. So ended up, you know, I washed my car and everything, got it cleaned up. So I ended up going to the park, watching softball, you know, till it turned dark. So, and up, so I said, I'm, I'm finna go. I gotta get ready for work, man. I'm finna go get me something to eat. And I hollered at everybody, told them about the dip. So I ended up leaving here in the Dairy Queen. So I went to Dairy Queen. And uh, as soon as I got to Dairy Queen, I went in and got me something to eat, part, you know, whatever. As I came out, I'm crying. I heard, I mean, all I heard was, uh, give me your keys. And so, all I had turned around, I heard like, pow, you know, and I hit the ground. And uh, next thing I know, I see my car driving off. And uh, I woke up out of surgery, and uh, all I seen was my leg, and everything was swollen. And uh, and at that time, I still didn't realize I was paralyzed. Uh, Cause I had people coming in, seeing me, and they was like, man, you know, your feet, when you swelling go down, man, you can be able to move. You can never move. So, and then I finally got the word that I was actually paralyzed. And uh, at that time, you know, it all hit me like, what I'm gonna do now? You know, you know, like a long night. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, just a word and crying. And, and then finally, they was like, uh, they're gonna send me to Atlanta to the Shepherd's Home. The next day, it was kind of quiet in there because the people that were there, still kind of, you know, in shock that something like that had happened. And they weren't, they weren't too much talking about it. The fact that a crime like that happened, again, he was in for fight. Also, you know, because we, we're not big on crime. When we got the call about, about um, Pario from a cousin of mine, um, saying I need to get to Dairy Queen, something that had happened to Pario. You know, as I was driving, you know, all sorts of things were, you know, going on through my mind, what's going on, um, is he okay? Cause I didn't get none of that information from my cousin when she called. So as I pull up, I see nothing but blue light, blue light everywhere. And that's when my heart just sunk. Like, is he okay? Where is he at? So I was, um, I was, uh, as I approached um, Officer Harris, um, he told me, you know, um, what had happened. And I'm like, I'm like, where is it? I got to be with him, where is it? And he told me that um, they had rushed him to the medical center, that he was alert, he was talking, you know, that he was gonna be okay. So um, after that, I was like, I have to get to my brother. So um, we got there, you know, the doctors was with him and they came out and let us know that um, he had to go undergo um, emergency surgery and that he was gonna be paralyzed. And I was like, no, he can't be paralyzed. This is, this is the uh, little boy that I've grown up with that ran fast, that that did did things. You know, he was just getting into his career with um with the trucking. You know, everything just just falling in place for him, and then for this to come and happen, it was a major setback. So you know, um, and then on top of all of that, you know, I can I can do anything do anything to help. I never looked looked at my handicap as a negative from a negative angle. Uh, at first maybe I kinda did, but as of now I don't. 
uh, I used to ask why, but I, I figured out that I never find the answer to that. So I just had to keep striving and keep pushing and hang around positive people. Uh, and that that what keeps me going and keep keep my drive alive. And, uh, so my my good ways out, my good days outweigh my bad. Uh, I graduated from Mary Person High School in 2005 from Forsyth, Georgia. Played football, had a, had a nice football career at Mary Person. Zapario was typically a good guy. He was definitely not confrontational. He was a decent student in high school, receiving good grades hung out with friends. He was the captain of his football team. He even won best smile for his senior superlatives in 2005. After high school, he earned his CDLs and got a well-paying job at Bib Distributing Company delivering alcohol. The same in my life uh, is that I still get around. I still, I still go out, still hang out. Uh, I do a lot of stuff that normal people think that people in hand, uh, wheelchairs don't do. So, like, I still can go fishing. I still go, I go bowling. Uh, it's the list is on and on. Uh, the things that I can't do, uh, I don't think it's a limit. You know, I I try to do what I can do throughout this journey with him, with this incident, um, I've learned a lot from him. Um, first off, just being strong. He, with the ordeal that he went through, he, he remained, always remained positive. Um, his, his favorite quote is, God is my homeboy. And that hits, hits to my heart because it makes me fit, let me know that he has he's adapted to the situation that he can overcome anything that you know, we have a conversation like damn like why you know why did that happen to me type deal you know what i'm saying but he never just broke down and started crying or well at least i haven't seen him because i mean ain't tell the way you do at home behind closed doors but you know, sometimes you ask yourself why, why it happened, and then sometimes he look at it like, cause like the anniversary of my birthday, and I call him like, Shoot, what's up, bro? You know what I'm saying? You straight? How you feel? You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, for the situation. You know what I mean? Because I know for a fact it would be like, hey, every day the anniversary come around, I'd be like, damn man, why I had to go through this or whatever. But he like, bro, I'm good, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't tripping over that no more, like. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, he, he got a strong, his, his mind strong, and he accepts the fact that he just adjust, he just adjust and adapt to life. And he keep it a pushing. Like I said, he traveled, he can't see some of my games. Um, he, he go to other NFL games. We go to tailgates together. I mean, he just, he, he enjoy life still. And, you know, and he ain't let it slow down. Most time I get around on myself, by myself, uh, I really don't have too many people pushing me unless it's a extreme hill or something or uh, it's something I can't, a hill I can't get up on my own, but that's the only time I really need help or uh, either over a curve or something. But most of the time I try to jump it, jump it myself or, you know, get over it. Then I ask for help if I can't. Uh, uh, when it comes to people helping me, uh, Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Uh, it could be like, when I get out of my car, if you're trying to help me and don't know how to put my chair together, you can uh, you can waste a lot of time, you know, it, it takes time. So by the time you're trying to figure it out, I would have been on had my chair together. So when people ask me to help put my chair together, so, you know, most time I'd be like, I got it, you know, thanks. And sometimes it seems like it rubbed in the wrong way, but I promise you, it's, it's not that. It's just a time thing, you know. I'd rather go on and get out of my car. You know, he 
still, you know, he's still the same, you know, he's still the same person he was in school, man. He just, you know, he just has a, you know, he just got a handicap. Like, you know, at first, you know, at first he was kind of down about it. Um, I mean, but, you know, that's, that's probably with, with anybody, you know, you know, when somebody tell, tell you, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, walk again. Yeah, so... I remember having a wreck about a few years ago, man. Matter of fact, uh, we had we had messed up the job a truck, a job truck, and um, man, I was messed up pretty bad. I was in the cast for about you know about, about five six months. You know, it was really hard to adjust. And then like one day, Pario came over my house. He was like, "Hey, man, let's go for a ride." And I'm like, Shh, "I can't go for no ride. I'm banged up." He was like, "Come on, big cat." That's what he called me, big cat. So I was like, "All right, cool." So. So before we get in the car, man, like, he was like, all right, now get out of the chair and get in the car. I'm like, man, I don't see how you do it. He showed me how to transfer from a uh, chair to the vehicle. I did that a few times, you know what I'm saying? He took me around. And it was it was real ironic because, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm so used to helping him. And somehow this guy, he always has a, a tendency to turn around and try to help people. That's, that's one of the great things I like about him, though, you know what I'm saying? His genius, he's real genuine and, like, I mean, shh. I don't know, man. I don't know anybody better than that guy. Since he is no longer able to do the manual labor that he's used to, Zapario has turned his passion for DJing into a full-time career. Uh, DJ, I D I'm a DJ, a mobile DJ. Uh, if you have a wedding, a birthday party, anything of that such, uh, hit me up, DJ Zap. My name, that's my DJ name, DJ Zap. Uh, DJ club events, bars, anything like that. I also coach football. I'm, we have a traveling football organization, uh, the Georgia Youth Football. I've been coaching for the last three, four years. And I, I absolutely love it because I love the kids. Uh, I give them inspiration and they give me inspiration also. So it's a great thing. I love to be around the kids. Zapario Glover is living proof that with faith and positivity, nothing can stop him.